Good morning. Good morning. This is Pastor Woodruff, and this is Focus 3 Church. God bless you this morning. This is, uh, what's the day? February the 28th. Eight. Yes, we look at it. We've made it through another month already, two months into uh, the new year. Look, I just want to thank you for tuning in to Focus 3 Church uh, this morning. Remember that you can pick up this service on Facebook and on uh, Focus 3 Church uh, Facebook page. You can also uh, pick this up on YouTube, on the Facebook page, or on the YouTube page for Focus 3. Uh, just put in Focus 3. And then finally, uh, you can pick this up on the website. If you go to focus-3.org, that's focus-3.org, you can go there and get more information about the church, uh, information about what we believe in, uh, a little information about the pastors, myself, uh, First Lady Karen Woodruff, Elder Woodruff, uh, and see a lot of the memories in the gallery, in the uh, galaxy or gallery, <laughs> uh, of different events and things that we've had in the past, like helping out with the tornado victims, uh, giving out food uh, to those that need it, uh, and different projects like that that we've gone uh, and done on last year. Look, I know that God has great things in plan for us. Uh, in this uh, year 2021 and so please uh, partner with us to help us to help the community uh, as we go forward trying to do the Lord's work also we want to always remember those that have asked us for prayer uh, for special prayer we know that again there are many that are going out there uh, and are having you know uh, issues financially and uh, or maybe with their jobs, or, or maybe with their health, or just praying for loved ones, uh, or just they need prayer for themselves. So we want to continue to uh, keep uh, not only our members in prayer for all of you uh, that, that have asked uh, either myself or other members of the congregation for prayer. We want to keep you uh, at the forefront uh, of our prayer list, because we do pray for you. When you ask us to pray, uh, I guarantee you we will uh, be praying uh for you and praying with you. Uh, before we get started, <clears throat> we uh, want to recognize that it is uh, Black History Month and we would uh, like to, you know, just give a few Black History facts uh, uh, before the month is out. Uh, it's always good to remember your history, to know where you came from, and to know uh, what we've done as a people. Uh, we've contributed a great deal uh, not only to this country, but to the world. Amen. And so we're going to just go over uh, just a few black history facts. Uh, I think that'd be good. Just go over a few black history facts this morning uh, before we get into the sermon. So uh, Black History Month, the celebration of Black History Month started, uh, actually it started as uh, Negro History Week, and it was started by uh, Carter G. Woodson. Uh, he, Carter G. Woodson himself, was a noted African American historian, scholar, and educator, uh, and a publisher. Um, we became, we, we started celebrating Black History Month back in, uh, well, it, it became a, a celebration month uh, back in 1976. Uh, and the month of February was chosen because it coincided with the birthdays of both Frederick Douglass and uh, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, the NAACP on February 12th, uh, 2019, uh, marked the 110th anniversary of uh, anniversary of Black History Month. Um, a couple of interesting people uh, in Black History Month, or or uh, they were recognizing Black History Month, are one uh, Jack Johnson, who was a heavyweight champion and uh, who held the heavyweight boxing title in 1908. Uh, he held on to the belt until 1915. Also, one of the first black lawyers, or the first black lawyer, was uh, John Mercer Langston. Uh, he was the first black man to become a lawyer uh, when he passed the bar in Ohio in 1854. Um, also, uh, John Mercer Langston, was the great uncle of Langston Hughes, uh, the poet from Harlem, uh, who was a Harlem Renaissance man. Uh, we also remember some of these uh, very familiar names in Black History Month, like 
uh, Rosa Parks, who uh, is credited with helping spark the civil rights uh, movement uh, when she refused to give up her seat on the, on the public bus uh, in Alabama in uh, 1855, which sparked the uh, Montgomery boycott, uh, bus boycott. Uh, also, a little bit less known is, is Claudette Calvin, uh, Calvin, uh, Calvin, who was arrested nine months uh, before uh, for not giving up her seat uh, to white passengers on the bus. Um, we also have the first uh, Supreme Court Justice, uh, Thurgood Marshall. Uh, he was the first uh, black, Ameri uh, black man to ever uh, be appointed to the U.S. Supreme Court. And he was appointed by Lyndon B. Johnson. Uh, as far as science, uh, George Washington Carver uh, developed over 300 derivatives products from peanuts uh, and some of the most notable ones are things like uh, cheese from peanuts, milk, coffee, flour, ink, dyes, plastics, wood stains, soap, uh, lanolin, uh, medical oils, and various cosmetics. The first black senator was Hiram Rhodes Revels, uh, who was elected to the U.S. Senate. And he was from Mississippi. He served from 1870 to 1871. And the first black woman representative was Shirley Chisholm. Uh, she was elected to the House of Representatives in 1968. Uh, and she represented the great state of New York. Uh, of course, we can't talk about Black History Month without talking about Madam C.J. Walker. Uh, she was born on a cotton plantation uh, in Louisiana and became wealthy uh, by inventing and selling a line of African-American hair care products. Uh, she established the C.J. Walker Laboratories and was also known for her philanthropy. philanthropy. Um, we also have Oscar winner in 1940, Hattie McDaniel, who was the first African-American to perform, a uh, performer to win an Academy Award, uh, the film industry's highest honor. Uh, she portrayed uh, a loyal slave governess in Gone with the Wind. And then the first black baseball player, Jackie Robinson, uh, played for the Brooklyn Dodgers. And then finally, uh, we have more recent uh, black, accomplished, uh, black people that accomplished things in the form of Oprah Winfrey, uh, Michael Jackson, uh, both joined the Billionaires Club. Uh, Robert Johnson became the first African-American billionaire when he sold the cable company he founded, uh, BET. And then finally, the first black president uh, in 2008, Barack Obama, uh, are, are some of the notable ones. And so, <clears throat> with that, we understand that, you know, black people have given a great deal uh, to this country uh, into the world and it is good that we recognize those talents those gifts that God has given uh, given us uh, that we have shared willingly uh, to the world a lot of times as we go forward in the society today there's so much division uh, there's so much opposition uh, in people or that people have uh, but I really do think that it's displaced uh, look uh, we all can get along, and as Christians, we should all get along because we all are seeking just the one thing, and that's to get to heaven. Uh, let us recognize the talents and abilities of those uh, that have gone on before us, but not only that, but let us recognize the talents and ability of those that are out there right now that are paving the way for new roads uh, to go to new heights uh, that we are making way for our children. Let us not let the devil uh, set us back and what God has set us up for. Amen. Amen. So with that, happy Black History Month. Um, we will be having uh, today our scripture, our uh, sermon come from our own pastor, uh, image of Elder Woodruff uh, Jr. today. He'll be bringing us, amen, a sermon that God has put on his heart. So I pray you listen up uh, to this sermon. I'm sure it'll be uh, very inspiring and something that you'll be able to take with you uh, throughout uh, this week. And so with that, and without further ado, I'll turn it over now into the hands 
of my dad and uh, 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 Pastor uh, Elder Elden Woodruff Jr. Good morning, everyone. I'm very happy and thank to the Lord for being here today uh, to share with you this message that the Lord has put on my heart. I want to thank uh, Pastor Woodruff uh, III, my son, uh, for that introduction and for allowing me to speak today. Um, we give thanks. First, I want to just give honor to God and to the church, to all of you that are out there that tune in today, and to just to everybody, everybody that's under the sound of my voice, uh, we, we give you honor, we give you praise. Would to just bow your head so that we can begin with prayer. Father in heaven, we give you honor, grace, and praise. We praise your holy name. We thank you, dear Lord, for our life, for our health, and our strength. We thank you, dear Lord, for making it possible for us to be here. You washed over us as we traverse the highways. Lord, you made it possible for us to get here safely. And we ask that you would just be with us, that we will make it back to our destinations safe. Dear Lord, we pray for those that are sick and that are shut in. A lot of people have asked for prayer, and we pray for all of them. Right now, we know that you are able, and you say that men ought to always pray and not give up. And if you're sick, the Lord says pray. And if you're afflicted, he said, call for the elders of the church and let them pray, anointing him or her with oil in the name of the Lord, and they shall be healed. The Lord, we believe that, and you have proven that. And we just thank you. Let us, <coughs> Lord, let us worship you. We ask you to fill us will give us your direction and your guidance. Fill this house and all of us who are Christians with the faith to believe that you are real. We know that you're real. And we ask you to just, the Lord, help us to get this message across under the direction of your Holy Spirit. We thank you and ask these blessings in the name of your son, Jesus. And now we ask everyone to join me in this prayer that covers everything. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Church, I want to read a portion of scripture that our text will, our subject will come from. The eighth chapter of Mark, reading a few of those verses. <clears throat> Beginning at the 22nd verse. And I'm using the new the King James Version of the Bible. And it reads as follows. Then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought him, they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. 
And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. <clears throat> then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Then he sent him away to his house saying, neither go into the town, nor tell, tell anyone in the town. When I read that, I came up, thank God, with this subject. How well do you see? And when I say see, I'm not talking about just physical seeing, but I'm talking about understanding. How well do you understand who Jesus is? You have to know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Not just because everybody says he is, but have you been enlightened personally? Do you have a personal relationship with the Lord? There are a lot of people who say that they believe in God, but they don't believe in Jesus. And we cannot get to God unless we come through Jesus. We must have faith in Jesus. Uh, this blind man that we got this message from and inspired by had a problem. He was blind and he wanted to see. And he had heard about all the magnificent and wonderful things that Christ had been doing at this time while Christ was here on earth. How he had healed people and he had caused other blind men and women to see. People had been lame and the Lord had blessed them that they'd be able to walk again. They'd been deaf, and Jesus had healed them. These were all signs of miracles in our eyes, not a miracle to God because God, there's nothing impossible for God to do. But Jesus was able to Help, and he'd been doing a lot of wonderful things to people, and this blind man had heard about him. And his friends, probably family members, took him to Jesus because they loved him. And Jesus loved him. And Jesus spit on his eyes. Now, spit. Some men might say, well, what? But then you know, that's, what about the look? You got to have faith. And this tested the man's faith. And the man agreed to allow Jesus to do this because he needed help. And he must have believed that Jesus could heal him because he was there and he wasn't protesting. And Jesus touched his eyes after he had spit on his hand and rubbed his eyes. And, and he asked him, do you see anything? And he said, yes, I see men, but they look like trees walking. Now, Jesus touched his eyes again. Say, now, how do you see? He said, I, I see. He said, I see everyone clearly. Then he sent him away. I want you to know that what I'm saying today, there are a lot of sick people in the world. This pandemic has and still is raising havoc all over the world. It touched many people that 
Most of us know somebody who's been touched by this disease, this virus. People are still crippled. People are being hurt every day. Accidents. Suffering from many diseases and afflictions. But I want you to know that you can be cured, but you got to believe. You got to know that Jesus is real. In the book of James, if any man is sick, say, let him pray, afflicted, call for the elders of the church. Let them pray, anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord, and they shall be healed. But you got to believe that if you believe in Jesus, then you're going to follow his instructions because you believe him. He's real to you. Do you know that God is real? Not do I know he's real, but do you know he's real? Because if you know he's real, your life will be changed. Because you know that all power is in his hands and there's nothing impossible for him to do. Church, <clears throat> in order to be saved, we must believe in Jesus. <clears throat> In order to believe in him, we must be able to understand that he is real. We must be able to see him with our minds. We must see him with our heart. When you think about Jesus, can you really see him with your heart? My question is, how well do you see? Do you know that God is real? In our text, the truth is revealed <clears throat> succinctly in the book of Mark. In the book of Mark, <clears throat> when Jesus heals a blind man, the same blind man that I'm talking about, I have a personal uh, experience with someone more than one person who had been studying the Bible and reading the Bible and going to church for years. And then one day they had an epiphany. In other words, they began to see Jesus as being real. It's a good feeling to know that God is real. When you go through something and you trusted him and you prayed to him and God has delivered you from whatever it was or whatever it is that's bothering you, uh, it does something to you when you know he's real. You can't, you have to let somebody else know. Prayed, had Bible class. Sometimes one-on-one, -on -one, just enjoying studying the scriptures. Talking to a lady that had been sick for many years with cancer. And she was worried, and that was on her mind, and she didn't know how long she was going to live, but she was worried about that. Now, we all know that sooner or later we got to leave this world. But... You don't have to worry about it if you trust in Jesus because Jesus came down here uh, to give his life and gave his life so that we might live. He paid a price because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And so just continue to trust in him. If you believe in him, you're not going to die. In order to be saved, we must believe in Jesus. We understand that he's real. We must be able to see him with our mind, with our heart. The question is, how well do you see? 
because I truly love you, I want you to really see Jesus. I want you to see him uh, and, un and know that he's real. When that happens to you, you will be a changed person regardless of what condition you're going through. You got to believe in Jesus. Somebody said, well, I believe in God. Christ, in this lesson, had come down and he had his apostles, his disciples, that were following him. And he wanted them to let them know that he wasn't going to be here always. That he was going to suffer and that he was going to be killed or in, you know, crucified in the, the most horrible death that you could, could have. But he did it and he didn't have to do it. He's, he gave his life. And when they were crucifying him, he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. When you understand that Jesus did this, though he did it for the world. But you gotta understand it's personal. He did it for you, he did it for me. So that we might have a right to the tree of life. So that we might live. That we might live forever. Because we're not gonna be here on this earth forever. We're only going to be here a certain time. We're going through a stage of life. But really living is when you see Jesus and know that Jesus is God's son. Because I truly love you, I wanted you to do this. wanted you to understand this. Only those who believe in God's Son will be saved. How well do you see? Or I could say, ask, how well do you believe? This question was asked of Peter and the other disciples as told in Matthew 16, 23. And I want to just read a little bit of that to you. Matthew 16, <clears throat> 23. Jesus had been talking to the Pharisees. These were the elders, the chief priests of the church. And all he wanted to do for them to believe that he was the son of God. And that he was the one that all the prophets in the Bible had foretold was going to come. And, but they couldn't because they knew his family, his human family, Mary and Joseph and his brothers and that, they knew them. And, they couldn't see that, they couldn't believe that this man was Jesus. But Jesus said, now, don't just believe me for what I'm saying, believe me from what I'm doing. And he had been doing things that no other man had ever done before. And, but they just couldn't believe him. And then from that time, it says, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. And then one of his most staunch, I'd say, disciples, Peter, took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far it be from you, Lord, this shall now not happen to you. But he turned to Peter. He said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. <clears throat> now they were, he was not only talking to Peter, but he was talking to all those disciples that were following him. Uh, 
And then they, by them following him, he looked at them and he said, if anyone desires to come after me, in other words, if anybody wants to follow me, there are three things that they must do. They must deny. If any man will come after me, he must deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whosoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Now we're going to stop right there just for a minute. And let that sink in. If any man will come after me, now this is Jesus talking. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. What does that mean? That means that as human beings, we have an innate urge to take care of self first. That's natural. Take care of yourself. But Jesus says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. In other words, you can't be self. You have to understand that Jesus has to be first in your life. He's your savior. You cannot save yourself. If you could save yourself and all these diseases come upon you, you would do that. You would save yourself, but you can't save yourself. Jesus is the only one that can save you. No matter how much money you got, you don't, you, it, it means nothing when you get sick. Oh, I know you need to pay bills, but that money is not what saves you. But the Bible teaches us that every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of life. Every good thing that happens to you comes from the Lord. Hmm? Don't you know Satan has nothing good to give you? But every good gift, every positive thing that happens in your life comes from the Lord. And all he wants you to do is just recognize where your help comes from. David said, Lord, said, you know, I look to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. That's where our help comes from. Keep trusting in Jesus. And then he says in the 26th verse, For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Uh, Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. What's your cross? We all have a cross to bear. You see, that's part of a cross. Somebody talking about you behind your back and trying to bring you down, that's another cross. You get hurt in an accident, that's another, and, and you're trying to get well, that's another cross. But he says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Put God first. Do what the Lord says do. Pray to Jesus. Have the elders of the church that you trust, that you know that they will do the right thing. You have respect for them, and they have, uh, have earned the reputation of being righteous. They represent the Lord. Trust them. Let them pray. You pray. And he said, you will be healed. I want to tell you this because I'm going to tell you. I've experienced a lot of the things that I'm talking about already. I've been in a situation where there was no help that I could see for me. But I've been brought up because God had blessed me with parents that brought me up to trust in the Lord. 
They took me to church. They made me go to church. After a while, they didn't have to make me go. I wanted to go. I wanted to read the Bible. And there were times when that was the only outlet help that I could get if I read the Bible for myself. All my life, the Lord had blessed me. I prayed to be able to take care of myself. I was hurt as a, ba as a child, or a young child, about five years old. Burned my hand, and everybody can see that. Uh, unconscious for three days. In the hospital for about seven weeks. Endured excruciating pain and suffering. But thank God he didn't forget about me. When I came, when I regained conscious after being unconscious for three days, came to in a baby crib. And there were two young children, older than I, teenagers, standing over me with a Bible and they were reading to me. And they asked me when they saw that I was awake, they come to, is it all right for us to read the Bible? And sure, I, I said, sure. And you know, God blessed me because he gave me somebody to talk to, somebody that cared, somebody that cared. My mother would visit me. It was a time when she had to walk to the hospital because we didn't have an automobile. But God blessed me. I'm telling you, God has brought me from a mighty long way. I prayed. After I became a grown man. Because I, I wanted children because I wanted to nurture them. Bring them up. I, I, I wanted somebody that I could help. That I could make them feel good because... I had been so lonely at times. And God blessed me. Now I have, I don't know how many. I got three children, grandchildren that I love. So many, sometimes it's hard for me to count them all. <laughs> but God has blessed me in so many ways. I wasn't, I'm telling you this because I know what I'm talking about. Had Bible class with a good friend of mine and a relative, and she's gone on to glory now, but before she passed away, we were studying the Bible together. And even though this was, she didn't have many more months to live, it brought happiness to her heart and mind. And one day, she just shouted. You know? She felt good right after a Bible class. She felt so good that she was just shouting and praising the Lord. And said, can we, look, uh, told me, said, I was getting ready to leave and I didn't want to wear out, you know. And, and, but she, she didn't want to stop. Just kept on. Shouting. She found, she, she believed in Jesus. I, I, I don't know how much she believed in him before, but I know at this time, if you believe in Jesus, he will show you that he's real. That he will help you. He's helped me so many times. He's blessing me right now. He's the one that put me to bed last night. He's the one that woke me up this morning. God is able and he loves us. Now, we want to go just a little bit further. Mm. 
Uh, I want you to know that if you're having trouble in life, you can resolve those problems. Keep on searching for Jesus. He's not far from you. But you got to know this. You will be eventually realize that he is not lost. He's in plain sight because you can, first of all, you can look at yourself. How God has made you. Look at your body, how it's put together. Look at the beautiful flowers that bloom. The expanse of the heavens, the sky. How everything is tied together. Animals. You begin to see them in a different way because they're all created by the, by the Lord and the power that God has given human beings to take care of his creation. That's our job. Jesus said, treat your neighbor as you treat yourself. Love everybody. Even love your enemies. This is a command from Jesus. You have to do this. As Christians, we have to understand that we are special in God's eyesight. We are his people. And everybody has an opportunity to be a Christian. Everybody has the, the, the opportunity to be in the house of God. If you're not, you need to prepare yourself and do it quickly. Because time is running out. And you will have no problem once you really see Jesus. Once you know that he is real. Your life will be changed. Let's look at John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Think about that. Everlasting life. But you got to believe in Jesus. Now, if you don't believe in him, you got everlasting punishment. Everlasting. That's forever. Jesus is king. He has to be first in your life. If any man will come out to me, let him deny himself. What does that mean? It just means put Christ first. Lord, you first. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you the glory. Because you are first. We're just recognizing him. Give honor to whom honor is due. God deserves our greatest honor. It's due him because he created us. Jesus died for us. He loved us. We are his. But you got to know that. Let's go to the 11th chapter of John. 11th chapter of John. I want you to know why you need to know that the only way to be saved is to believe, really believe, that Jesus is God's son and that he came down here to give his life for all of us. This is at the 38th verse of the 11th chapter. We're talking about Lazarus, and most of you have heard about him, read about him. Let us take a look. So then Jesus again, grounding himself, came to a tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Mm -mm. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Then when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. <clears throat> And he who had died came out bound in hand, with hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Look at the power of God. Hmm? Jesus said, You believe in me, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Hmm? If any man believes in me, though he was dead, yet he shall live. And if he lives and believes in me, he shall never die. We're talking about everlasting life. Continue to trust in Jesus. <clears throat> Remember, if any man will come after me, this is what Jesus said, let him do three things. Deny himself, get out of self. A lot of times we, we spend our time trying to get wealth, prestige, and power. And none of these things are you going to be able to take with you when you leave here. What's important? The important thing do you believe in Jesus? Do you really believe? Do you see him? Do you really see Jesus? Uh -huh. If you do that, everything will be all right. And God will pour, he said, if you, if you believe Jesus, he said, and, and obey his word, and you're not going to obey his word if you don't believe it, if you don't believe that he exists. The Pharisees and Sadducees was saying, we believe in God, but we don't believe in this man who says he's the son of God. And Jesus said, well, if you don't believe, look what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing. There's nobody. He walked on water. He spoke to a storm. And there was a great calm. Even the the wind obeyed him. Who else could do this? He caused the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk, the dumb to talk. I'm doing all of these things. What else do I have to do? They could not see it. They could not See, well, this blind man that was healed, after he was healed, while he was blind, in reality, he was seeing better than they were because he believed in Jesus. He believed Jesus said what he could do. So a lot of times we're walking around thinking we can see, and we're blind. And if you believe in Jesus, regardless of what your circumstances is, you're in better shape than those that don't believe. Church, believe in Jesus. Look at yourself. Search yourself. How well do you see? Do you see men as trees walking? Or do you see men as men? How well do you see? Do you see Jesus as real? Uh, do you see him as just a myth, something that people are talking about that sounds good? 
but he's real. He's in tune with you, with your problems, and he wants to help you, but you got to believe that he's real. I hope I've said something that caused you to think. I know that if you're already a Christian, you know what I'm talking about. But if there's anybody out there that don't believe in Jesus, you haven't given your life to Christ. Do it now before it's too late. Things are happening fast. Everything that's that you, we depend on, if we don't have Jesus to guide us, it can be our demise. Hmm? We want a new car. That's all right. Nothing wrong with that. We want a beautiful home. All these things are good. We want jewelry and we, we want money. We want all these things. And nothing wrong with that, but they have their place. Nothing takes the place of Christ. Is he first? There are some people who are in giving and it's helping one another. They want to help themselves first, but think about others. You know? Love, when you love somebody, when they cry, you cry. When they're happy, you're happy. That's real love. You're concerned about them. That's the way Jesus wants us to, to, to treat one another. Become a Christian. When you become a Christian, when you become a Christian, don't you know that you have joined a club that's set apart and that's special? When you be become a Christian, I want you to understand that you are blessed. And as long as you are a Christian, you are blessed. Nobody can take that away from you. I hope I've said something that has enlightened somebody that cause you to think or just rejoice that you already know who Jesus is. You already see him. And you can be happy because you know that he's on your side. I love you. And may God continue to bless you, each and every one of you. And take care. And we just ask God to be with you. At this time, we as got uh, Pastor Woodruff to come, have fine remarks. If everything is clear, then we're going to stop right here. And just give you an opportunity to, to make it up in your mind and to find a church if you don't have a church home. Come to Focus 3. You know. Yeah. Uh, get in a church. Get Jesus. Get into Jesus. Get in the church. You know. Don't wait. Do it now. You don't have time to wait. And we're going to stop right here, but one of, first I just want to say to uh, Mr. Woodruff, or Pastor Woodruff, and his family, and all of you, thank you for allowing me to speak with you. I've enjoyed it. I hope I've said something that help, will help somebody. And I pray that God will continue to bless each and every one of you. And now let us be dismissed. And now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you, henceforth, now, and forever. Let us all say, Amen. God bless you.